So once again, uh, we are here to start the last presentation of the day in this room. And we're here with Peter May from Savannah College of Art and Design, who will talk about creative careers, who will talk about uh, career-oriented education, share a lot of interesting uh, things. So I'm giving the floor to him uh, to share presentation, to talk to you. Feel free to ask any questions in the Q&A uh, box and in chat uh, to panelists and attendees. So Peter, have a good, pr good presentation and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. I just wish that we were all together in person, uh, but I'm happy to be here with you this evening for you and this morning for me. So my name is Peter May and I am here to represent Savannah College of Art and Design. SCAD. I've been working here at SCAD for around 10 years, so a lot of the information that I'm going to share you comes from my personal experience of working with students in this art and design program for the last 10 years. I also am an artist. I studied painting when I was in undergrad, so I have my Bachelor of Fine Art degree just like I'm helping students to get these days. Now, I just want to explain a little bit about my presentation. Um, the beginning will be just a very brief introduction of my school, and then we'll go on to talking in general about career-focused education, specifically creative careers, uh, but really the importance of um, researching how a university that you select can help you with your career later on. Um, and then I'll go and share some uh, more information about my university and how we help students because we've really gotten a lot of experience over the years from launching students into their careers and into successful careers that they're passionate about in creative fields. So just give me one moment to set everything up. I'm going to share my screen. And as I said a little bit earlier, uh, please just type your questions into the Q&A, into the chat. I might not see them until the end of the presentation, but I'll leave plenty of time at the end for questions. If for some reason I don't cover all of your questions before the end of our time, please come to our booth. Um, we'll be here for at least one more hour, I believe, and you can ask a question there. You'll also find a chance to um, find my contact information during the presentation as well. So just give me one second. I'm going to set this up. And just give me one second. I'm gonna go to wait, hold on a sec. I knew I do it. I knew I would do that wrong. Let me stop that and let me just try this one more time. Okay, so I believe everybody should be able to see my screen now. Um, so again, hello, and my name is Peter May, and I'm the Associate Director of Admission at Savannah College of Art and Design, and I'm very, very happy to be here today and to talk about the importance of researching uh, the, career, uh, the career benefits of the university where you choose to study, and specifically creative careers. Um, just to give you some background on my school, um, I work at Savannah College of Art and Design. SCAD was founded in 1978, and since then we've grown to be one of the biggest art and design uh, schools in the world. Hold on a second. Uh, we have locations in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, in Lacoste, France, which is in the south near to Marseille, in Savannah, Georgia, as well as we've been offering e-learning classes for many years. Um, like I said, we're one of the biggest art and design universities in the world. We have at this point across those locations approximately 15,000 students from all over the world, including more than 100 countries. And in fact, about 25% of our students are international students coming in from outside of the U.S. And we offer more programs of study and specialization than any other art and design university in the US with over 100 degree programs across more than 40 majors and 75 minors. And this is an important fact to keep in mind as we transition into our discussion of a career focused education, because behind every single one of these majors is a career path 
And this is something that we really spend a lot of time thinking about at our university, not just what you're going to study, but what career you're going to get once, once you graduate. So let me just start with this question. What is a career-focused education? This is an educational path that's rooted in career training, and it can offer a streamlined experience, emphasizing uh, the skills and concentrating on the skills that you need in order to develop uh, to get specific employment. Um, so I think it's a good question to really ask yourself as you're looking into universities, especially universities in the US. I'm sure at this point you've already discovered that the university system in the US is a little bit unique. It's quite expensive. It costs a lot and we look at it in the United States as an investment in your future career. So definitely a question to look at. So at SCAD, career preparation is at the heart of our mission. Uh, and, and this is evidenced by our employment, uh, alumni employment rate, which is 99% of our students who graduated in spring 2019 were either employed or seeking further education within 10 months of graduating. And 91% were actually working in their field of study in a creative field. And that just is a reflection of kind of how obsessed we are with not only again, giving you the education, but also launching you into a lucrative career. So here are just a few examples of careers that our students are getting in creative industries. Um, there's thousands of examples of these. And so this is just really a small uh, set of examples. And while you might not have an idea of exactly what kind of job you would like to pursue now, it's a fantastic time for you to take a moment and consider your skill set and your interests. What do you enjoy doing? What do people ask you for help with? What is your expertise and knowledge? What careers offer you the ability to grow and be inspired while also ensuring financial stability? If you seek a career-focused education, it gives you the opportunity for, to fast track towards your career, but you shouldn't feel as though you're locked in and have to decide instantly what you would like to do. At SCAD, and I think this is true for a lot of the universities that you look at, you actually, when you start as an undergraduate student, even though you might express interest in a particular field, you're actually officially starting as an undecided student. And later you have the opportunity to explore these different majors that we offer so that when you do uh, formally declare your major of study, you have a more informed decision to back that up. Now, I do wanna start talking a little bit about career employability uh, in creative fields because while it sounds great that we're getting 99% of our students employed or 91% employed in their field, it's not uh, very useful if you've just spent a lot of money on your education and you're not making very much back. So let's now look at the creative industry. Now in the next slide, you're going to see that there's some numbers here and you'll see the USA and the UK. And I just want to say that the reason why there's some focus on the UK just in this presentation is that I originally developed this uh, for a presentation for the UK. Um, but a lot of these numbers are really reflected across Europe and, and Eastern Europe and Eurasia and Central Asia because we're all part of this global economy. So even though I mentioned the UK, it's important to know that similar numbers would be reflected throughout the world. So taking a look at the employability in creative industry, the value of arts and cultural production in the United States in 2017 was more than $850 billion, um, making it 4.5% of the gross domestic product. Um, the arts contributed to the national economy more than construction, transportation, warehousing, travel and tourism, mining, utilities, and agricultural industries, believe it or not. In terms of we've exported $72.6 billion and imported $42.9 billion. So we actually have um, a surplus when it comes to this 
a lot of these creative industries, including things like movies and TV shows, manufactured jewelry, creative advertising, and so on. I'm sure a lot of the film and TV productions that you watch in your country actually originated in the US. So when you're watching those and when you're uh, paying for those platforms, you're actually supporting a creative industry in the United States. Um, this is reflected over the past 20 years where consumers are spending more on admissions to performing arts events. As a share of total consumer spending, spending on tickets to performing arts events have increased by more than seven percentage points. So again, this is just a huge industry where it's going up. So creative industries offer more than 200 million jobs across sectors on the top uh, of this figure with over 240, 284,000 businesses and accounting for 100 pounds, that's UK pounds in gross value added. So again, just driving the point that there's really a huge industry for these creative jobs. Um, and again, Again, a little bit more in the UK, but I just want to um, skip over this just to let you know that it's really similar in all of these countries, um, in all of the countries in the world. Um, so here's an example of an advisor and counselor to many of the world's most in influential businesses and institutions. They asked the question, what is design worth? To answer this question, McKinsey conducted what they believe at the time of writing, the most extensive and rigorous research undertaken anywhere to study the design actions that leaders can make to unlock business value. Their intent was to build upon it and strengthen previous studies. And um, they found that the, the, they tracked the design practices of 300 publicly listed companies over a five year period in multiple countries and industries and found that design led companies had 32% more revenue and 56% higher returns to shareholders compared with other companies. So the value of a creative mindset and design thinking really paid off in the business world. In fact, I found this article, which was written in 2008, so it's 12 years old, about, and it's in the Harvard Business Review, and there's a theory that MFA is the new MBA. So MFA is a master of fine art, and actually an MBA, as you know, is master of business administration. And what they found in this article was that the, the MFA was actually more valuable. Fewer people are getting uh, the MFA, fewer people are studying creative field, and therefore they're, and yet, as I've hopefully demonstrated in the um, presentation, the creative field is growing and it's, and it's causing companies to become more profitable and really has been shifting the thinking in a lot of major companies to the point where they really value creative uh, parts of their operations, whether they're offering products or services. And um, to the point where it's easy to find an MBA person to hire, uh, it's less easy to find somebody who's an expert in something creative. And yet the value of the contribution of that employee is higher. So what does that mean? It means that more creative people are in uh, are being considered for jobs and the competition is in their favor when it comes to not only finding jobs, but also to their salaries when they're offered jobs. Now, I do wanna just highlight that a lot has been changing. I gave you some numbers since from spring 2019. We do not know yet the numbers from spring 2020. And here we are in the middle of this global pandemic. So what does that mean for the future? Well. In a lot of ways, it means a lot of opportunity because as you can imagine, things like public spaces that need to be shaped by creative industries like architecture and then uh, interior design, as well as things like um, industrial design which shape the products that we use, um, we have to take into account the fact that we live in this post pandemic world. So there's a a lot of redesign that's happening. The other thing that I can just share anecdotally is that the, the students that study um, with us have 
more likely to find uh, jobs that are they're able to work remotely. So I'll just give you an example. At the beginning of the pandemic last spring, I was working with a student who was an interior design student from Canada. When the border was going to be shut down between the United States and Canada, she panicked and she went home because she didn't want to be stuck in the United States. She was able to keep her job while working remotely. And a lot of our students were able to do this, whether they were studying graphic design, game design, interior design, even fashion design, um, students were able to work remotely because it wasn't as important that they be in a physical space. There, the, there's something about this industry that can take place in spite of the fact that we're keeping separate from each other these days. Now, uh, now I'd like to transition and tell you a little bit more about what SCAD does to help prepare you for your career. And I'm going to start with a video called Creative Careers, which is the next thing that you'll see. But please turn on your microphone and tell me if it doesn't work, because it doesn't always work when we're connecting by Zoom like this. SCAD sets you up for success, hone in on what you're good at, make it great, and use everything that SCAD has to offer with it. SCAD is constantly staying very aware of industry trends and therefore kind of adapting curriculum to play into that and be able to have students be very prepared for real life after graduation. Just seeing the depth and the amount of detail the students put in and when you bring in people from all of those different disciplines together, it's truly really amazing what they can create. It really opens a lot of doors and a lot of opportunities become real possibilities here. What's different about SCAD is they're setting the bar higher here. The student will really shine outside of this environment and the, the workplace. I wish I was back here as a student sometimes. <laughs> They've got all the facilities you need to do anything you dream of. The reaction to the name of the school definitely brings a smile. It's amazing how every time that I say SCAD, more and more people are going, oh my God, you went to SCAD. There's drive, there's compassion, there's a willingness to take huge risks. I just don't know that it exists anywhere else. Because of SCAD, I got my dream job at Disney. Running Artists and Microsoft. 3M Healthcare. Porsche Cars North America. Gensler. Google. Google. Netflix. IBM. Lenovo. Pixar Animation Studio. I'm going to be a product designer for Instagram. So when students first step into SCAD's campus, they often have big dreams. And there are several extremely successful and well-known companies that come to mind when they imagine their futures. With an, educating focus, with an education focused on career preparation, students and educators alike are committed to a clear goal, melding students' passions with a successful career path, many times with the, these exact companies. From the moment you arrive at SCAD, your creative career begins and you'll discover a world of professional opportunities. And as a student, you'll collaborate with these leading companies through SCAD Pro, which is a program where students dream up design solution for global brands. Recently, students reimagined Disney resorts, pitched the future of advertising to Google and marketed driverless cars for Volvo. SCAD Pro has hosted more than 500 collaborations with more than 300 top brands. And these SCAD Pro assignments have led to more than 200 job offers. Proof that real world experience set you apart from the competition and bring your dream job that much closer to reality. Even after graduation, you'll receive full support from SCAD. SCAD partners with alumni to launch new companies, products, and services, providing the mentorship in order to make it in the marketplace. For example, through SCAD Art Sales, 
alumni are able to connect with collectors around the world and to land commissions from places like Netflix TV shows to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. So this was a new football stadium in Atlanta that was being developed, which was a, I think a $200 million project. And they came to SCAD where we have a campus location and asked if we could help contribute art. And we were able to connect through this program we have called SCAD Art Sales, connect them with current students, alumni, and even some faculty in order to essentially create the art for the stadium, which is now seen um, by everyone who visits it, including when it hosted the Super Bowl last year. In addition to partnerships with brands, students, and alumni, SCAD regularly hosts today's most captivating actors, artists, and designers online and through our global locations, like the Savannah, uh, SCAD Savannah Film Festival honoree and, and Emmy Award winner Gerald Jerome featured in Moonlight and Amazon Soleil and Spades and Netflix When They See Us. Um, from SCAD ATV Fest to SCAD Fashion online presentations and SCAD style, these exuberant events celebrate the best of fashion, film, and design and attract renowned visitors and global press, including artist and activist musician, Madame Gandhi. Whether it's Hearing inspirational words from music legends, attending a masterclass in, excuse, in an exclusive screening with an award-winning actors, or showing your collection to esteemed designers, these exclusive opportunities are unique to SCAD and they are available to our students to help them grow as individual, but also to embrace their professional persona. A fantastic example of this includes for the past two years in a row, SCAD students have won the grand prize for Coca-Cola Refreshing Films, a student filmmaking competition. Students won the top of the line camera equipment along with an additional $15,000 in prime mo uh, prize money to launch their careers. This year's winner, the short film Let Loose was the only film that featured a live action filmmaking with animation and visual effects. The film crew consisted of nearly 100 students from 14 SCAD degree programs and beat out 38 other universities for the grand prize. It was yet another experience that students encountered that mimicked the, that of the real world and uh, as a professional project. To discuss this further, here are some behind the scene videos of this one, this year's uh, win winner. Now I'll let you look this up on your own because I don't think that there's time right now, but I did wanna share that with you in case you would like to look it up. Um, another great example of a student who took full advantage of the tools, resources, and practical curriculum that we offer to our students, including it, it includes alumnus Christopher John Rogers. And following his graduation from SCAD as a fashion designer, Christopher launched a new line with fellow SCAD students, Julia Whitley, Alexandra Chison, David Rivera, and Christina Ripley. Um, and they've gone on to become really successful in their New York based uh, fashion line. They've even dressed people like Michelle Obama, Rihanna, and most recently Zendaya at the Academy Awards, as well as Tracy Ellis Ross. Um, for his impeccable designs, Rogers and his team won prestigious and the prestigious 2019 CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund Award. And to show off his garments, he enlisted a strut of, strut of SCAD grad DF, DVF accessory designer and model Nikita uh, Mkumda, who is pictured here modeling his uh, outfit at New York Fashion Week. So that's just an example of one of our students who was able to, uh, because of our career focus, was able to actually learned the, the skills that he needed, not only to do fashion design, but to launch a fashion design company. Plus he developed that network with other students in order to, to launch that. Now, one other way that we help students to prepare for their careers is through an optional program, which we call Grad Path. Now, Grad Path is a way where you can combine your undergraduate studies with your graduate studies by utilizing things like taking classes during the summer when most students take a break so that you can actually accelerate um, the path towards 
completing not just an undergraduate degree, but a graduate degree. So normally, for example, a Bachelor of Fine Arts will take four years to complete and a Master of Fine Arts might take two years or in some cases longer uh, to complete. But if you do this grad path, you can actually combine those. And in some cases would we'll be able to graduate with both the BFA and the MFA in, in as little as five years. So again, just if you're thinking about your career and the amount of money that you're investing in time, this is just another way to think sort of two steps ahead at, at the value of this education that you're getting. Um, and here's a couple of interesting statistics. Um, in 2015, only 33% of high school students mapped down a plan for their futures beyond college. But today, more than 90% of students are considering their future careers. Let's expand that number even more to help yourself by, cons by considering more than simply what university you wish to attend. Take the time to consider how to help shape your future into an experience that will make you both happy and proud. What specific test steps can be done can you take today to reach that goal? How can you help better understand yourself and the world around you? What can you specifically offer? And is there an institution that's going to help you enhance your skills? There are countless reasons to choose to pursuing a career-focused education, and at SCAD we pride ourselves on trailblazing academics. The variety of student clubs and organizations that we offer and extensive industry partnerships. But in the end, know that every element of life at SCAD is designed to help you land your dream job and launch your creative career. So if you are thinking about a creative career in particular, I do encourage you to consider us, but regardless of what career you're considering, I do encourage you from this point forward to start looking at college and university, not just as an education, but as a way to launch you into a career of your dreams so that you can follow something that you're passionate about and turn your passion into a profession. Um, so don't just look at how much fun it's going to be, how much you're going to learn, but look at their career resources that they're offering you. Um, look at what kind of industry collaborations that they have. And look at that employment rate, where are their students working, how many of their students are working, and what kind of support do they give for that uh, for, to help your, their students work. So that concludes my uh, presentation, but I did want to end with this last slide. This is my name, Peter May, and my email address, and I'd very much be happy to hear from you if, if you think of questions later on. So please do keep in touch. If you have a chance before the end of the uh, fair today, come over to the SCAD booth, um, chat with us there. I have a colleague who is working the booth right now who is happy to answer questions as well. And um, fill in one of the interest forms on our website, scad.edu. So for now, I'm gonna stop the share and come back on so that I can see uh, myself here. And I'm happy to answer questions. Let me go ahead and look at the Q&A in the chat to see if we have any questions to start off with. Um, so there's, uh, let me just what, kind of work my way through and I'll answer these questions as they come. So the first question that I got was, what requirements do you require from students? Well, that's a great question, Aga, and let me answer that. So if you're applying to our undergraduate program, uh, what we are looking for are first, you just have to complete an application form. You can do that on our website, scad.edu, or you can do it through Common App if your high school works through Common App. Um, but the, that's really the first step. Once you submit that application, then an admission advisor will be in touch with you and will help you step by step through the rest of the process. We do not require any kind of standardized tests, uh, so you don't have to submit an SAT score or anything like that. We will ask for your high school transcripts, uh, which are copies of your grades from high school. And then we will encourage you to submit a portfolio and a resume or list of outside of class achievements. Those are things like volunteer work, 
work experience, awards and recognition, uh, sports, hobbies, student clubs you've been involved with, that kind of thing, which helps not just with admission, but with, with also with scholarship consideration. So again, the main thing and the first step is just to complete that application form online. Uh, now, there's another question that was, can you tell us about grants for international students? So we, all students, including international students, are automatically considered for scholarships. At SCAD, we have merit-based scholarships that you'll be considered for. The first one is based on your academic history. It's an academic scholarship award. And then the second one is, your art, is an artistic scholarship. We call it an achievement scholarship. And it's based on a combination of your portfolio and that resume of your outside of class achievements. Um, and then the next question was, can you tell us about the costs and grants for international students? So I spoke a little bit about the, the grants um, which we call scholarships. Um, without scholarships applied, tuition is around $38,000 per year. Uh, but like I said, uh, all students are considered for scholarships as they go through the application process. And those scholarships go from modest amounts all the way up to full scholarships, although full scholarships are obviously quite rare. Um, so it's hard to say exactly how much you would uh, pay uh, after you've gone through the entire application process. The only way to really know is to apply and to go through that process. But one of the things I really did hope that you would take away from my presentation today is that we see this as an investment in your future career. Um, and you really have to see it like that. It doesn't make sense to spend as much money as you're thinking about spending by going to any of these universities in the US and studying unless you can somehow make some of that money back with your future career. And so, I mean, I can tell you countless examples of students that I've worked with that have been able to do that, but I did wanna just share that um, we do see this sort of as an investment. Um, so hopefully I answered that. There's looks like there's some questions in the chat as well. Oh, yeah, someone asked, said they couldn't see the video fully. So could they share, could I share a link to, on YouTube? Absolutely. Let me, um, let me uh, put that into the chat box before I go. I'm so sorry. I didn't um, realize that you couldn't see the video while I was playing it. It's um, okay. It's usually, it's different experience for depending yeah. on where you're reviewing this from. So I was all understandable. I think if you can share this video in the chat then it will be sufficient. We still okay. have a couple minutes more, like we can wait for three, four more minutes if you have more questions. Uh, so I see already some questions to Q&A, but if you have any questions, consider asking them now, especially think about creative careers, think about education in the sectors that are involved, as Peter was presenting with design, with uh, music, with art, uh, anything from Peter's personal experience as an artist uh, that he can highlight in his education and his work. So think about such questions and we are still accepting questions for the next three, four minutes. What additional questions do you have? And I'm looking, while you're um, typing that, I'm gonna look up where I, cause we do have that video on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll definitely share that in the chat yeah, as well. Yeah, so the question that I see additional at Q&A is, does freshmen need to submit TOEFL scores? That's a great question. So um, we, we don't require the TOEFL or any other ESL test for either admission or scholarship consideration. And the reason is that we have a full ESL program at SCAD. Uh, so what I generally recommend to people that are applying to us is don't worry about that at all at first. Later on, if you're accepted to SCAD, you've been, you've been awarded a scholarship, you talk with your parents and you look at your financial situation, you decide that you really do want to come to SCAD, you can submit a TOEFL score or an IELTS score or even Duolingo or something like that in order to exempt out of any kind of ESL requirement, but it's really not important at the beginning when you're just applying. So don't go out and take the uh, TOEFL just for us. The, if, 
if you don't ever submit a score, you can still be accepted. You still get scholarship. It just means that we'll give you an English assessment when you come and possibly place you into ESL classes, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And another question is, are there any opportunities like having a semester abroad while you're studying? Uh, like opportunities that you can take now while you're still abroad? Is that what that means? No, opportunities, well, if you are uh, accepted to SCAD and you start studying, can you study abroad or like semester, having a semester abroad during your studies in your oh, okay. university? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a great question. And I didn't really um, talk about this um, during my presentation, but SCAD actually has uh, locations, not just in Savannah, Georgia, USA, Atlanta, Georgia, USA, but we also have a location in Lacoste, France. And when you're accepted to SCAD, you're accepted to all of the locations. So you can, if you study abroad, you can, of course, you can, you, you can study in Lacoste. So you have the opportunity already to go to France and have that kind of study abroad experience without having to transfer any credits. Now, if you would prefer to do a study abroad experience somewhere else, we do have short term kind of academic um, programs where a faculty will lead a group of students on a very short term, like one or two week educational exchange to another location. But if you want to actually get credits somewhere during that time, you would have to transfer out and then back in. So the best thing in that place, in that case, would be to actually study at our Lacoste campus. Any other questions? Yeah, I think we're done with the questions. And uh, once again, thank you, Peter, for uh, presenting today. And I think it's a really interesting topic to, like, to talk about uh, creative careers to make students think about a variety of options that they can go while they're studying in America. So um, thank you for, I think we can wait if you have the link to post in the chat. Uh, yeah, I, it's so funny. I Wait, hold on a second. I didn't quite find it yet on YouTube, but I know it's at my booth. So I'm actually okay. going to, if you go to my booth, you're going to see there's a link for videos and it's posted there. And actually I can try to just pull it from there really quick um videos i think yeah i think it's a good good way and actually good advice for the next 20 minutes we still have a flair open so visit peter's uh booth for uh savannah college of art and design or scad and uh, you will see there the video and you can ask any other specific questions and thank yeah. you peter a lot for this presentation okay thank you so much bye everybody take care <laughs>